So I've always talked about how some whiskies are great for different moods and some whiskies are great for different seasons. And I definitely think some whiskies are perfect for the winter season. So I'm in the Southern Hemisphere and I've just been through winter. And I know a lot of you are in the Northern Hemisphere about to go into winter. Winter is coming. So I'm Phil and I'm gonna fill you in about the top five winter whiskies. What exactly is a winter whiskey? Well, when I think of a winter whiskey, I think of something that's sort of rich, that's complex, that's gonna kind of warm you up and it's flavorful, maybe it's smoky, maybe it's sherried. But however, this is just my personal preference. That's what I like to drink in winter. If you wanna drink sort of a light, fruity, kind of delicate whiskey in winter, you know, you, you go for it. But these are just the whiskies I was definitely reaching for over those colder months. The first whiskey on my list was definitely this one, and I definitely was reaching for this whiskey a lot over winter. And it is the Port Charlotte Pack 01 2011. So a lot of you might already know Port Charlotte from the Port Charlotte 10, which is a classic go-to smoky whiskey from Isla. And Isla is basically this little island which is really well known for a lot of distilleries that make smoky whiskey. It's aged only eight years, but it's aged for part of its maturity in French wine cask from Bordeaux called a Pouillac cask. Pack means the Pouillac cask or something like that. Um, I don't actually love the naming conventions of these. I just think it makes it way too complex for, I don't know, people who are just trying to understand it. So this whiskey is from the Brutacladdy distillery and Brutacladdy actually have another bottling they release called the Octomore. And personally, I actually prefer this whiskey over the Octomore, which is crazy because I really like the Octomore. And that's because this is also punchy. It's bottled at 56.1%, but also it's not so much just all about big smoke kind of flavors that sort of punch you in the face. It's a little bit more complex than that. The smoke's there, but those wine casks really bring in this really nice richness and a really long finish. That's why I was just reaching for it again and again in winter. You could sip on one tiny little dram, you didn't need to drink much, and it would go for like an hour. Like it was just a really, really good whiskey. And like all Brutic Lady offerings, this is not your filtered and natural color. There's just so much going on. It's got this really nice sort of savory, meaty kind of beef bourguignon, and then these kind of chocolate and berry kind of notes. You're kind of salty, licorice, and then your classic Port Charlotte sort of bacon smoky notes. However, again, this is expensive, and if you're on a budget, you can't go wrong with Port Charlotte 10. So the next whiskey I was reaching for a lot over the winter period and one of my favorite Speyside distilleries and a distillery you will probably already know from my other videos like my Sherry Bomb video is this one here, the Tamdu Bad Strength. This is a fantastic whiskey you can kind of see how much I've got through it over winter, especially for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere if you're going into Christmas time and you want a whiskey that's just like that Christmas cake notes, those dried fruit notes, those spice notes, but also a whiskey that warms you up because this is bottled at a punchy 59.8% alcohol. However, it is a batch release, so batch to batch will be slightly different. My one is batch five. Probably the ones you'll see in the shop will be a little bit later batches than this. And Tamdu has really kind of won me over in the last year. The main reason is because of how well they integrate sherry casks with their whiskey. And Tamdu solely ages their whiskey in ex sherry casks, and they just do it so well. When I want those sort of ex sherry notes, Tamdu is the whiskey I'm going for. Mm. I just want it to get cold again. New Zealand summers are great, but I don't know, I do love just, you know, sitting in like a cold cabin by a fire and having a great glass of whiskey. There's something real nice about that. So the last two winter whiskies have been sort of cast drink and the third whiskey is gonna be cast drink too. Now, this next whiskey was kind of a surprise for me. When I bought it, I didn't really think I'd be reaching for it that much, but I've been reaching for it a lot over winter. And that's because I've always been a little bit skeptical of this distillery. They normally do quite sort of light whiskies bottled at 43%, um, you know, and I quite like the sort of punchy whiskies. However, 
this distillery has a really interesting spirit character and having it a car strength has been really interesting and really Moorish. And that is the Glen Goin car strength. So this is also a batch release, so batch to batch they'll be slightly different. The one I've got is batch six and it's bottled at 59.8% and they'll be slightly different depending on what batch you get. Also my bottling is in the old design, they've actually redesigned it, it will look slightly different now, but this is fantastic, it's natural color and I just was really surprised how much I was reaching for this whiskey over winter. It's got a really interesting complex character, but you know, it's not light and delicate and it has some really interesting notes too. Ooh. If the last bottle was kind of more of the Christmas cake bottle, this is like your late night cup of tea and biscuit bottle. It's just got those sort of digestive biscuits, it's got that sort of cinnamon, the banana, the marshmallows, you know, it's kind of that sort of desserty kind of flavors, but also it's quite a balanced whiskey. It's not too far in any direction, but it's not boring. Like it's got this really interesting kind of sort of distillate character coming through. I got it for pretty good value. It was $130, which for a car strength whiskey these days, at this kind of level and this kind of amount of tastiness, and yumminess and just, you know, yum yum. I don't know why I said yum yum. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good, it's good whiskey. So the next whiskey I was reaching for a lot over winter was this one here, the Craig Allerkey 13. And you can definitely see how much damage I did to this bottle. I'm pretty sure I bought this like halfway through winter and it's nearly all gone. It's fantastic, but also very surprising to me because when I first got into whiskey, someone had a bottle of this and they gave me some and I just really, really didn't like it. Like it was weird. It was like just, uh, I, just I just didn't, didn't like, like it back then. then. However, as I've gone through my whiskey journey and returned to this bottle, like I can't get enough of it. And that's the thing with whiskey, your tastes change over time. So if you're a beginner, I probably wouldn't recommend this as much, but if you're more intermediate or you're advanced and you've drunk quite a lot of whiskey, this is definitely one you should probably approach. It's a 13 year old and it's from the Speyside region, but it's, I'd say overall, it's probably one of the more unknown malts. And let's just try some. What I really like about this whiskey is it has this sort of pepperiness and this kind of like smoked meat kind of flavors and then this kind of fruit hitting as well. Maybe that's where that sort of challenging funkiness is kind of happening. It's just a really interesting winter whiskey and that's what I want. I want to just sip on a whiskey. I want to just be thinking about it. You know, this is one of those whiskeys that, you know, you're having a conversation and it interrupts to let you know it's also on the conversation and you start talking about this whiskey. Probably is the best value out of all these whiskeys on this list as well. You can get this for a pretty good price. I got it for a good price in New Zealand and it's a good winter whiskey. So before I get to my number one winter whiskey, I just have some special mentions. The first is this one here, which is actually from the Cadrona distillery in New Zealand. And I know a lot of you won't be able to get it, but this is about the winter whiskeys that I was reaching for. When I was in Queenstown and we went on this trip down there, I was sipping on this a lot, like in those cold nights. I just keep coming back to it. It was great. It was the perfect whiskey to have around winter time. So I got this at the distillery. It's Asian ex bourbon casks and finishing Oloroso Sherry. It's a five year old and it's punchy. 65.2% but what I really like is it has a really interesting distillate character I really like the sort of nice floral kind of flavors that come through that you don't really get so much in other scotch whiskies that I've had what is happening with Cadrona in future though because it is in small bottles and I really have been trying not to drink too much over winter um, and trying to savor it but it's you know hard not to but apparently when they start releasing higher age statements like 10 year olds apparently they'll start releasing the 700 ml bottles and releasing them at around the normal sort of 46 percent so i'm looking forward to that exciting things are happening in new zealand whiskey so the other whiskey i was reaching for a lot over winter was actually the whiskey i aged in this barrel so if you watch my how to age whiskey in a miniature cask video you'll know that i aged cask drink really smoky whiskey into this cask which i had seasoned with sherry for over six months and so it's basically everything you want in winter. Super smoky and super sherried. And yeah, I've been reaching for a lot. It's been a fun experiment. And you know, if you're interested in that, go watch that video. 
Sometimes the best way to appreciate whiskey is to try something completely different to reset your palate. And that's why I'm a big fan of trying other types of drinks, especially cocktails. But the thing is about cocktails is that it can kind of be sort of an art and a skill in itself. And that's why I'm a big fan of today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes made for people who want to invest in themselves, enabling them to discover their own creativity with whatever they want to do. So when I was wanting to learn how to make my own cocktail, there was a course that I really liked, which was called Cocktail Secrets, Making Your Own Signature Drink. There's a massive variety of other new classes to discover, like how to be a beer geek or leadership or marketing, or maybe just how to make your own logo there's definitely a course out there that will add value to you and match your goals and the depth of these classes is unreal it's all kind of split up into like easy to consume chapters which you can watch on your laptop or your phone and it's ad free too and everything's subtitled in spanish french portuguese and german so if you want to try skillshare for one free whole month use the code down below imagine what you could learn in a whole month but it's only available for the first 1000 people so click the link below and back to winter whiskey so the number one winter whiskey that I've been reaching for all the time was this one here. The Ben Romick Peat Smoke Sherry Cask Matured. This is fantastic. It's everything you want in a winter whiskey. Now Ben Romick has been getting some flack recently because a lot of whiskey lovers absolutely love the spirit style and that sort of thing, but don't really like that they release their whiskies at around 43% and that sort of thing because you know, they sort of think that it could do so much more if it's just bottled at those much higher strengths. However, I don't know if they're just testing the waters at the moment. They've also released the Cara Gold, but they have been doing some releases at 46%, and this is one of them. And it's an integrity bottling. Um, it says the age statement, it's nine years old, it's natural color, it's non chill filtered, and it gets everything for what I want in a winter whiskey. It's smoky, it's 55 ppm, it's aged in sherry casks, and it's got a really funky, interesting distillate character, a lot like the Craig Allerkey 13. It's rugged, it's tough. In winter time, like you can sit there with just one small dram and you can go for like an hour. It's fantastic. It's got that really nice sort of funky kind of industrial character. But then there's dark berries, dark chocolate, raspberry, cinnamon. I don't know why more people are not going on about this whiskey. It's fantastic. So thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. If you like all things whiskey, subscribe and like the video. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy your winter whiskey.